Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we're talking about heart and vision. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we talk about what's possible. I'm Talana Simpson, and I'm in the studio with my co-host, Jack Milan. Hi, guys. And in the studio, we've got with us our guest, Philene Naidu and Dina Marais. Hi there. Hello. Welcome, guys and girls, and our producer, Tim Ha. It's always back there. Thanks, hey, Tim. Thanks, yeah. Tim. So tonight, we've got... Uh, it's, it's a subject that's really touched us. I think the, the two mm. stories I want to share with you, it's really about what happens when you, when you follow your heart, when you, you get a sense, when you're in that flow and you're really connected to what it is you really want to do and you start following that, that intuition, that voice, that um, vision, whatever it is, mm. where it can lead you, the possibilities that open up, the, the avenues that you explore and, and find and yeah, that vision that stirs. Yeah, I think um, if we quickly introduce what you guys are really and who you are, um, I think when we put the show together, we didn't really exactly know where we were going to go. Mm. Um, Cause the stories are so. But having sit, sitting and listening to the stories, um, it all just flowed together, and I'm 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 excited about tonight. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're here um, talking to you from Johannesburg. Philene's just come all the way from Europe. He's been I here have with France. With French connection. Cheese who and is wine. He's listening in. <laughs> and Jack's just come back this morning from Cape Town. It was windy. In the Apparently, it's very windy. Yes. He brought it all back. Like my friend yeah. Sonia, they got blown over literally. <laughs> so we almost lost the car door. <laughs> 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 Open the car door. <laughs> oh, it was a little hectic. Cape Town's known for their their wind. Mm. Um, so, just to let you guys, just a quick intro. Um, for Lynn, yes. Um, I'm not sure how <laughs> to intro you. As, is it is it uh, explorer? Is it um, writer? Writer. Is it I was kind of philanthropist. I kind of came here this evening hoping that, like. So I've got my voice recorder on to hear how you're going to introduce oh. me. <laughs> so, <laughs> that you that? so that when people well, ask me, hey, what failed, do you do? <laughs> 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 I know. I guess I'm going to have to come up with it myself. <laughs> um, well, I think, I think for me, you know, the thing that stands out from you and how I would introduce you is definitely all of those together. Adventurer, philanthropist, mm. um, writer, um, explorer, um, explorer of human Heart, as that's what I would call it. That's through cool. your adventure. Mm. Um, that's the and way and I would leader. say. It. And of course, leader. There's, there's leadership. Mm. That there. definitely goes with it. Um, so we'll we'll be sharing your story tonight with cool. with the viewers, and they can kind of understand why we actually have you here tonight. <laughs> uh, to me, is really inspiring. Yeah. And then, then we have Dina here. Mm. Uh, Dina is from a um, website called Live Life Lacquer. That's Dot right. Com. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a self-coaching website, um, and they're also actually sponsoring us tonight. Um, so that's exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, and by, by Dina, I've known Dina for a while. She's um, a meta coach, so a specific style of coaching, and has done some amazing things with, with the, all the information from the cognitive behavioral sciences and making it very accessible to people. So thank you for all your work, because I think it, it does brings what's so so useful in, in uh, what's, what did I say, cognitive behavioral yes. sciences to, to put on people's tables. Yeah. To make it accessible. Very much. To For people. more and more people. Yeah. 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 Okay, excellent. I think that's exciting. Yeah, it's very I think there's, exciting. A lot of, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there, but people don't know how to get to there um, and actually yeah. use it. So to me, it's an exciting project you've got going. No, there's, there, there's a lot out there that tell you, you know, what to do, but there's very little to tell you how to do it. Yes, okay. And that's kind of mm. your goal. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. But I want to start off with Philene. A couple of years ago, I think you were 24, if I remember the... Yeah, yeah. So it's a while ago. You didn't know what to do. You were... I think you just got out of varsity. You didn't like the, the varsity scene. You didn't like the corporate 
job that was lined up and possibly there in, in your future. Yeah. And then? Yeah, it's so first not knowing not knowing what to do, um, except I didn't know where to go. I just knew where I didn't want to be. So that, yeah. was, that was the first step. I kind of looked around in my life and saw that this is where I don't want to be. And so this is where I need to get out of. And I kind of just hoped that by getting out of the space that I was in, then I'd get some kind of lead of where to go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, got, yeah, coming to the end of, uh, of Varsity, dropped out, um, yeah, which pleased everyone <laughs> to yeah, know. <I'm> sure. <laughs> 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 um, Especially the parents, usually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My father loved paying back the bursaries and, and, and everything else. Nice. Um, yeah, dropped out and then just uh, hung out in bars and restaurants, working, working in bars and restaurants. Mm. Um, just kind of waiting for, 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 something, for something to happen. Kind of had this, had this sense that there was this part inside of me that told me, not to be where I was. Mm. So um, I think it was that, that stage of my life is when I learned that there was another part to me, like beyond body, beyond my mind and thoughts and emotions, the normal things that I had going on inside, I discovered another part, heart, intuition, spirit, what, whatever, I, I, I don't know. And so I decided to follow this voice to try and see, okay, well, who are you? Where do you come from? And, and you know, um, why have you told me not to be in an air-conditioned air office driving a 3-series Beamer because, you know, right now I drive an old piece of junk. A <laughs> <laughs> 3-series Beamer would have been pretty cool. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah. Would it, but would it have been? But would it have been? That, yeah. th that was the thing. Uh, yeah. And, and as it turns out, I'm really happy with my 1984 Sapphire, which has done 233,000 Ks nice. and sure. still going strong. That's not bad for 83, wow. bro. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I've, calcu I've calculated that. I think I've done the equivalent of going to Egypt and back like uh, four times or three times or something. Nice. So, yeah, awesome little thing. Okay. But anyway, sidetrack. So how did you get that, that first message? Because I know the first message, whatever the heart, that your heart, spirit, whatever, it spoke to you. You were yeah. sitting quietly. Yeah, I kind of, so, I mean, I, th I think I think a year passed after I dropped out of university. And so, like, I remember when I, t when I was speaking to my father, he was like, uh, boy, you know, will I see you smile uh, if, if I let you go down this path? And I was like, yeah. And he let me go. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful to mm. him for that. He's, mm. uh, my dad's the one who's given me wings always from the start. Um, but after about a year, you kind of start feeling a bit of pressure because you've made this radical decision away from the normal way of life, and you're very aware that eyes are on you, yes. um, <laughs> expecting you to what fail. You <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When are you uh, going to do something? And you kind of, after a while, you start losing that initial energy. You start thinking, wait, wait, wait a minute, have I, have I made the right decision? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I couldn't actually say that I did make the right decision. So one day in a... I just kind of reached the end of my tether and said, okay, well, that's it. Uh, I decided not to go into work for the next week. I climbed up Table Mountain and I sat on the top and I was like, okay. So, and this is, yeah, this was my very, <laughs> very mature thinking at the time. Hmm. I was like, okay, so I know this voice, whatever it is, has come from inside of me. So I must exist for this voice to exist. So if I don't exist, then the voice dies. So, okay, the voice would want me to be alive. And so I sat on top of Table Mountain and I said, okay, voice, whoever you are, I'm going to sit up here. I'm not going down. If I have to hunger, starve, freeze to death up here, then that's how it's going to be. But you're going to tell me something. Give me something. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I sat the whole day. And, and, and I said to myself, well, if, uh, you know, if, if I get to the end of the day and this voice hasn't spoken, then I know that this is not real. And then I'll just turn my back on it and go back living the way I was living. It's um, quite a commitment. Yeah. To yourself. Yeah, but y you kind of reach that stage where you've looked at all the options in front of you and you're not happy with any of them. Yeah. So you reach that stage where it's going to be this way or I don't actually want to be here on this earth in this life anyway. So, yeah. you know, to hell with it. Mm. Um, and I shouldn't really have given the voice that much time because... Uh, I kind of sat the whole day away. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <laughs> wait, made you wait. <laughs> I should have given him like five minutes. You know? <laughs> but I said, no, it's like until sunset. And literally, like I'm sitting <laughs> up there, starting to get cold. It's Cape Town. I'm at the top of Table Mountain. The sun's going down. I can see the guys playing on the touch rugby on the sports field. They start going away. It's getting cold. It's getting dark. And I'm sitting there going, okay, what's going on? But very cool. What happened in that time up there? 
everything that went on in my mind had a chance to play itself out. So every idea, every argument against me, every fear, every doubt kind of played itself out. Yeah. And it was cool sitting up there because it just kind of disappeared into the air until I reached a stage where I was empty yeah. and quiet. Okay. And then in that quietness from, from absolutely nowhere, I, yeah, like two, st uh, the, the, best, the best way I can describe it is like two stars like switched on inside of me. Real Africa. That was it. Um, and it wasn't a thought, a normal thought that, that, that I'm used to. And it, was, it carried no emotion with it. There was no feeling. I didn't feel any pressure. It was just like two stars, real Africa, and that was it. Clarity. So clear that I couldn't, I couldn't deny it. Okay. So soft um, that it was terrifyingly powerful yeah. just okay. in, in its stillness. Mm. Um, there was a certainty in it where I just knew that, okay, this this is something I've got to follow. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to check this out. And because and it was late in the evening, I decided, okay, and I walked down the mountain <laughs> and said, okay, go. that's it. I've heard from God. I'm going home to eat. <laughs> and so then, what I have I understand happened is you 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 followed the the real Africa. You kept hearing and seeing, you know, those words, real Africa, those, those stars. Yeah. Right everywhere. to it. One time you were buying a book, and there was the the magazine right behind the lady's head had big real Africa on it. So you said, oh, I'll buy that magazine as well. And that magazine led you to? Yeah, Zambia, the eastern province of Zambia. Cra craziest thing. I mean, like literally, I'm at the airport and I'm just thinking, the whole, this is like three, four months later, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, real Africa, cool, but like, what the hell is that? There's no, yeah. like, go east, go west, take two <laughs> steps right. There's no <laughs> instruction, no direction. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what do you do with real Africa? And I'm walking so, out the bookstore and I turn to greet the cashier woman and she turns and she looks at me, bold yellow writing on this magazine cover, Real Africa. I'm like, whoa. So I buy the magazine, jump on the plane, read it, read all about the eastern province of Zambia and those two stars just shine out of that page, Real Africa everywhere. I get home, pack my backpack uh, and say, okay, well, that's it. I'm, that's where I've got to go. I'm going. So I jumped on a bus and went off to... Zambia in search of real Africa. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. So one of the things that I love to say is when you arrived there, you got off the bus, you sat on your suitcase. Yeah, Backpack, yeah. yeah. I remember you saying, you know, you, you, you went with a specific intention. You didn't take any kind of book with or anything that's going to cloud yeah. your idea of what you need to do or need to see or that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of arrived there the way you, I remember it. You kind of arrived there with not knowing where to go, not knowing anybody, <coughs> obviously, not having any idea of where you are, where you're going to go. How did you, how did, how did you come to actually move from there, from being the in that stop. spot, in that bus stop? What happened there? Yeah, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the side of the road I'm, on my backpack, and there's a million things going through my head. Where are you going to sleep tonight? Where are you going to change these traveler's checks? What are you going to eat? Do these people even speak English? <laughs> uh, you know, all, all, of, all of these things are going through my head. And I'm busy thinking to myself, okay, how do I get over this? How do I, how do I solve this? I, a couple of people on the bus I spoke to, and I asked them, hey, do you know the nearest backpackers? Because that's how I did it in Europe. You just land and, hey, backpackers, and bang, you're there. Yeah. Easy. When I asked for backpackers, everyone kind of looked at me like, like, what do you mean? What, what are you talking <laughs> about? This is really <laughs> and, and it was a moment. I mean, it was hot and I'm sitting there and I'm sweating and I'm trying to think of my education and my money and all the things which I normally rely on like to get me my next step further. Yeah. But none of these things were actually working for me in that, in that situation. Yeah. Um, and then eventually almost I kind of just gave up, submitted, kind of sat and I resolved that, okay, the only way I'm going to get another step forward is with the help of somebody. Mm. Mm. Um, and I wasn't going to use any money to buy the help of somebody. So I said, okay, what's the best way to draw someone into me? Okay, it's smile. <laughs> so <laughs> I just started smiling, this goofy <laughs> smile. And I said, well, I'm going to search the eyes of everyone that walks past. And I'm going to trust that the voice who led me here is going to connect my eyes with another set of eyes. Mm. And there's going to be something to move us forward. Yeah. And Joseph came along. I'll never forget this dude with the biggest smile on his face. He comes up to me, and the first thing he says is not like, "Hi, how you doing? What you? Where to? Where okay. to?" That's how that's how he starts his conversation. Okay. And I was like, "Okay, I wasn't really prepared for that." So I was like, uh, "Real Africa." I kind of muttered my 
journey out there. I'm on a journey, a spiritual journey, real Africa. And I expected him to like look at me and go, you know, weirdo. <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> but he didn't. It was like this dude was there waiting for me. Okay. Um, and as I'm talking, he's just like, oh, the place you want to get to is the valley. That's where you want to get. Where will you stay tonight? I, said, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. He said, come with me. I'll show wow. you. And that was it. He mm-hmm. called a taxi and took me off. Wow. Uh, and I went and stayed in a guest lodge that evening. Uh, yeah, guest lodge. It was uh, a room with more <laughs> holes in the mosquito nets than it was safer to sleep on the floor than actually in <laughs> under the mosquito nets. And. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just aware of time because we get, there's so much in your story that we, we want to share. Maybe yes. we're going to have to get, get you on again. So, so what, I know then you went and um, you ended up making, you found your way to that, the eastern province, right? And you made some friends and you were like entertaining them and buying beers. Yeah. Yeah, and having yeah. a good time yeah. and yeah. getting to know the locals. Yeah. And you, I know you have some fishermen out. Then we're going to just have to yeah, go to the part where you went and reached in for your money to buy the next round of beers and <laughs> and there was nothing yeah yeah three months had passed and i blew so i had enough i'd kept enough money to last me a year and uh three months went and uh yeah the money didn't last <laughs> <laughs> i was having quite a good time um and it's weird when you're disconnected from the western world you don't look at bank balances and stuff so i honestly didn't know that my money was gone until i reached in and it was empty and then reality struck because I'd realized that I'd been making all of these friends and doing really well with my money. I was a popular guy and had lots of friends because I was buying the hungry food. I was buying everyone beers. I was, yeah. you know, a fisherman needed nets. I'd buy it. And my, my value, the value that I had brought to this community was in what I had, my cash. stuff, my material yeah. cash. Yeah. And when that was gone, I was like, wait a minute. What do I have to offer mm. this community? Mm. And I was suddenly faced with my own uh, uh, insecurity. And I was like, I don't have anything to offer. And I felt isolated from everyone that I'd been around because I thought, well, if I go out there, everyone will be expecting what's been going on for the last three months and I don't have that to give. Yeah. So I put my backpack on and I just started walking. Um, so I was an eight-hour drive away from the nearest electrical point Telephone, post office, source of running water, sanitation, whatever. Basically yeah. in the middle of nowhere. No <laughs> way, with, with no means of getting more money and yeah. just there. Well, I mean, it would be an eight-hour drive to get to the nearest town to make a phone call, but I, how am I going to get a ride <laughs> into town? <laughs> you know, I've got nothing. <laughs> and, eight, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I just keep walking. So that was, again, just the best idea I could come up with. Let me just start walking. Um, and see what happens along the way. Maybe I'll get to South Africa, maybe I won't. Mm. Eventually I stop. It gets hot, it's about 40, 45 degrees. Again, I sit down, my backpack on the side of the road, and I'm just like, I'm finished. And the same process starts again, like when I arrived in Zambia, it's like waiting for something to come (laughs) along. With a smile. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You just start start smiling. (laughs) It's amazing when you have nothing uh, material to offer, and you realize that your only hope is in people, it's yeah. amazing the smile that comes on your face. Yeah. And it's not like this fake, you know, smile. It's like a genuine, That's a, all a I genuine have. love That's for what humanity. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you suddenly realize that, man, I'm totally dependent on humanity to help me out here. Yeah. Um, and this dude comes along, <laughs> Canisius Bianda. He looked like a 12-year-old kid, but he was a 32-year-old man missing his two front teeth. And he comes and he starts talking to me. And we chat for a while. Um, and after a while, he, he asks me, well, well, same thing. He asks me the question, you know, what are you doing here? I tell him the story. And he's so amazed that I would like, you know, why would this voice lead you to here, this poor nation? Why would you leave South Africa? Yeah. We, we were all trying to get to South Africa and you come <laughs> here. Go, yeah, like, going you know, the what other are you way. doing? Are you mad? Um, but just really grateful. That was a weird thing. Really grateful that I'd, that I'd come there. Eventually, he asks me, you know, have you eaten? <laughs> I was like, dude, haven't you heard anything I've said? I don't have any money. I, I, no, I haven't eaten. And that's when uh, he holds up this little uh, plastic bag with this big toothless grin. And in this bag are a whole lot of tiny little fish. And he's been at the river in the morning. And I'll never forget this. He holds it up and he looks me square in the eyes and he goes, Philin, don't worry. We are paddling in the same canoe. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> and so I go with him. I follow him to his village. Um, 
people are just following me everywhere, little children. I get to this village. Uh, there's a little tree, a little shade spot, and old people are sitting under there. As I approach the village, the, there's a man who m moves away from a stool. I sit down on the stool. A circle forms around me. Everyone is just interested, asking stories. He goes and Bianda goes in, talks to his wife. She comes out and greets me all respectfully. His mother, this old woman, comes and greets me respectfully. And I'm like, who am I that you yeah. should be you know, that you should be so respectful of me? Did you find that <coughs> from the point that you didn't have that that expectation to I'm not sure how to put this, that expectation to exchange whatever you thought you wanted to exchange for the cash mm -hmm. that you came more from your heart? I think that's exactly it. I think you've hit it on the head. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a surrender yeah. where I'm not looking for anything. Uh, I don't have anything to offer. We're not, this is not some kind of business exchange. I am who I am, mm. and I'm going to meet you for who you are, mm. and I'm just going to have to trust that uh, there's got to be a way forward that the two of us can that can work together. Mm. Yeah. And in this complete surrender, the more open I became, the more <coughs> I seemed to attract good people, good conversations, mm. people willing mm. to help me along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I just became more honest. Okay. Um, and, and in that flow then of honesty and, and from the heart and just surrender... It sounds like gratitude. You, you ended up spending four years going from house to house, hut to hut, village to village, waiting for the you know, elephants to move before you came out the huts and, and just experiencing that, that very simple, fascinating way of... I lived in this community. Um, I think at that stage, I don't know whether it's the 26th or 76th. I think it was the 26th most poorest nation, poorest nation on earth. Okay. Um, they took me, so I finished my first meal when it was time, when the light started fading, someone would ask me, you know, where are you going to sleep tonight? And each time I answer was, I don't know. Like, honestly, I didn't know. Mm. And someone would say, oh, you've got to come to see my village. Oh, you've got to meet my wife. Oh, you've got to eat uh, my wife's food. And it was just from hand to hand to hand to hand. I was just handed over. Eventually, that was the first seven months. Eventually, it got to December and I was like, okay, I, I need to get back home. Uh, let me go and do some work, collect more money, come back and try and live differently. Um, this community, like these poor people, I'm talking about people who eat like a meal would be boiled pumpkin leaves, tomato and onion. That's a meal with That's some, right? some millipup, you know. Um, poor. They all came together. They bought me a bus ticket mm. to send me back to South Africa. Not on my own. They bought a bus ticket for one of my friends who was one of them. Mm. with the instruction for him to take me home and deliver me to my mother. Wow. And so that's exactly what happened. I, I get home to my mother. My mother looks at me, and the first thing she says is, boy, where have you been? You've gone fat. <laughs> 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 and I've been living on nothing but the grace of others. Yeah. Uh, and I picked up three kilograms. Excellent. So in coming back to South Africa then, you made the decision obviously to return. But this time you had... I won't say different intentions, but you returned with a few other ideas, which kind of took you on a on a on a roundabout journey. Different path. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's the part of my story that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I've been I've been so aware of the difference between heart and mind. Mm -hmm. My journey started in the heart, and as I moved through this community and engaged with the community, it was all heart. It was just humble heart. Mm -hmm. And then at some stage. <laughs> And this is, this is the Western in me. At some stage, I looked at the situation and I thought, I could possibly be the most educated person in this community. Wow. Mm. I could make some good profit. <laughs> yeah. And so I went home to raise some cash to come back to get uh, involved in business. Okay. It started with a good intention. Um, yeah. I, I, had a, I had an idea that because I saw this real Africa, just this community and I started thinking to myself, surely there could be a way that we could build, get into these communities that haven't been affected negatively by westernization yet. Surely we could get in there and start up these youth centers to equip and, and skill the youth yeah. so that they, when westernization comes, they would get the good out of it but rebuff you know, yes. the stuff that breaks down community. My very next thought, my, my westernized conditioning was, okay, to do that, I'm going to need money. Okay, let me start a business and make the money. Um, 
and it started nice and simple and innocent, but I just I just moved from heart to mind. I started thinking more about profit lines and I started forgetting about the people all around me. It was mm-hmm. what can I sell? What can I get? What can I get? How can I get? It, that mentality took over. Yeah. Uh, honest truth, I yeah, I got lost. The journey I started with the heart just kind of faded away. Um, Always in the back of your mind because with the mm. with the uh, what you want to do with the youth, you center and that kind of stuff. That was always in the back of your mind. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I could think uh, as we're all human. <laughs> and I think what what relates to me there, if I can just kind of touch on that, is you know we, for me, what 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 that is is we we know in our heart what it is we want to do. Yeah, or we 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 need to do. That's going to yeah. fulfill who we are. Yeah. Um, but we try and ignore it through what other people are telling us or expectations or peer pressure or social yeah. pressure. Yeah. Fear. Or fear. fear yeah. Self-doubt. 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 Yeah. It's a huge one. Just and belief we that, that, that we could do something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we almost force ourselves to go down a path that is not us. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yet we go down that path not that it's a wrong thing, because in that path we'll still learn some lessons. Yeah. Um, Sometimes hard ones. Hard ones, <laughs> which we'll get to. Because you did then you then always had this in the back of your mind, but you kind of veered off track um, and focus more on business instead of actually what you what you felt your mission really was. But yeah. But with the good intentions and the in, something from me, the, the intention was I'm I'm doing this because when I get the money, then I can go yeah, I can and, and, and build the center. When yeah. I, so the, yeah, the it's almost there, but it's, it was misguided. So it's almost it's like the heart we gave know the story, me. But <laughs> the heart gave me a vision. message, a vision yeah. of like this is where, this is where you could go. This is where you'd be really happy. Yeah. And in that moment, rather than going back to the heart and saying, "Okay, lead me there," I went straight to the head and said, "Oh, okay, I see that." the best way for me to do this is like this, like this, like this, like this. And I started yeah. putting in my plans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, Instead which of being in that flow, that surrender, that Still that allowing myself to be guided. guided. Yeah. 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 So tell us briefly how that, how that happened then. Because you went down this journey that kind of brought you back to that place. How did that all come what, to pass? Yeah. Yeah. You were driving. I was driving from Zambia down to, down to South Africa, um, carrying, carrying a thick wad of US dollars, um, uh, yeah, I'd got into African cross-border business, all the bribery, corruption, everything that my heart rages against, I was doing <laughs> for a good cause. <laughs> um, and I crossed over Turundu border. I was in Zim. Uh, you see that sign which says you're now entering the middle of nowhere. I passed that sign. You see the second <laughs> sign which says, no, seriously, you are now no, in the no. middle <laughs> of nowhere. <laughs> I was somewhere there. Um, and then to this day, I have no memory of what happened. So... And the next part of the story I tell is uh, just what was told to me. Okay. Um, so apparently I was behind this Tanzanian truck. It was one of those, if you're driving in Zim, that, there's these long straights. There's just this mirage of heat. That's all you can see and nothing else. And it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. It was hot. I took off my seatbelt. I undid my shirt and I'd settled down and I was just cruising. Apparently this Tanzanian truck, they're infamous for making turns without indicating. I came to overtake him. He, t- he was turning at the same time. I slammed on my brakes. I came behind him. My front right touched his back left. My car spun around and started rolling. Wow. Now, this old man who told me the story says, after the first roll, I got thrown out of the driver's window ahead of the vehicle. Oh and I landed flat on my back. And, and, and he tells the story. We wanted to come and get you, but we couldn't because the vehicle was still rolling towards you. Wow. And I'll never forget the way he tells this to me. He says, and then it's like the hand of God came out, <laughs> caught the vehicle and put it down right <laughs> next to you. And wow. when he tells that story, yeah, I mean, oh, whenever I tell the story, I, yeah. it's just, it's, it's powerful it's stuff. <laughs> touched in your heart. <laughs> so... So yeah, then, then that was that. I was taken to a, I was taken to a clinic. I was so I was relieved of uh, all my US dollars and my cell phone, and uh, <laughs> you know, I was doing my bit Back for doing my bit for the poor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I, I think sorry, just your your father and friends somehow they managed. They they realized you hadn't got through the border. They tracked you down. They found you in the hospital, and your father brought you back to yeah. Johannesburg. Yeah. So if you can just go. F- so yeah, three weeks in a private hospital uh, in, in Johannesburg, uh, multiple skull fractures, neck fracture, brain contusions that were apparently 24 hours away from hemorrhaging wow. uh, if I'd not been brought in and they managed to uh, get all that Release liquid out. The pressure, yeah. um, 
Yeah. But the result of that was I, I got out and, and uh, a neurosurgeon says to me, he says, uh, uh, he looks me square in the eyes and he says, are you a praying man? And I was like, and I was really smacked hard in my conscience because I realized that I'd gone far away from heart. Yeah. Um, so I kind of nodded guiltily <laughs> at him. Like, yeah. And then he looked at my mother and he held up all the scans, the ECGs, the CATs and everything. And he said, look, medically, there's nothing we can do. Wow. Uh, and the words he used, you suffered severe head trauma, frontal lobe damage and critical neural pathways, irreparably damaged. That, that was his word, irreparably. There's, there's nothing we can do. Mm. And so I was put on a, on a course of meds um, just to kind of, numb me so that yes. I wouldn't have these fits and seizures and, and, and uh, temper tantrums, which I did have once I punched a hole in a door. Nice. Um, <laughs> um, I once held a knife to my mother's throat. Um, wow. Yeah, it was uh, vicious stuff. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, another quick series of s events and people and encounters led me to this uh, whacked out church uh, in a place called Northcliffe where okay. the pastor's like this dude off the streets of Hillbrow. And, uh, yeah, he notices me. He's talking one day to the congregation and he notices me and he looks me square in the eyes and he, in this real rough Afrikaans, he'll brow tone. He, Brew, what's, what's wrong with you? You look, you look pretty messed up. Yeah. And I kind of stared at him. He came over to me. We talked uh, and he looked me square in the eyes and he said, no, 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 you are a mighty warrior. There's much for you to still do here. This, this is not good. Um, and then, yeah, there was a call for the church to pray over me. I was prayed over. I uh, remember just kind of disappearing into a ball of light, and it felt like millions of ants were running around behind my, my, my face. And eventually I woke up, and I looked up at my father, and I, I stood up, and I, and I smiled, and I was like, Dad, I'm healed. Um, and, yeah, my father didn't really have that look of belief in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about, boy? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, boy, come with me. <laughs> but, I mean, I was walking fine be before I needed to be supported to be walked. And so I walked home. I threw my meds away. Um, my mother wow. woke up the next day. She freaked out, took me straight back to the neurosurgeon, neurologist. They did all their tests again. And it all came out. The question was, what have you done? And, and I kind of looked uh, childishly at the guy and said, well, I prayed. <laughs> you, you told me to. <laughs> you told me to pray, man. I prayed. <laughs> That's what yeah, I did. Yeah, I followed your instructions. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, a neuropsychologist, neurologist, neurosurgeon to this day, they all refer to me as the miracle child. Wow. They, they, they looked at my mother and they said, this boy is healed. It's, they did all the scans again, healed. Wow. So what did, what, did, what did this whole experience at that point, what did it tell you? What did you get out of that? Dude, honestly... At that stage, a lot of confusion. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm alive. That's great. Mm. Um, I'm still a bit shaky, very shaky. Um, I've lost uh, this business. I've lost everything. And I'm in Johannesburg, yeah. which is the total opposite of real Africa. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. Um, so there was big confusion. It's like, okay, what's going on? I've been given a second go at life. So obviously, I'm still supposed to be here. There's still something for me to do. Mm. But What? Um, so I looked around for Table Mountain, wasn't, wasn't there, because um, I, needed, I needed to have another, another go at my heart. Yeah. So I pitched a tent to my parents' garden and, and did the same thing. I said, well, I'm not going inside. I'm not going to eat. Um, I will literally starve myself to death <laughs> unless I get some kind of some call, some kind of direction. Like, what, what is going on here? Yeah, uh, yeah and again, I, I should have learned the first time. Uh, I, I gave I gave my voice too much time. This time I was kept for five days. I <laughs> five days no eating. You go through you go through hunger, you go through anger, and then you just disappear into this space of peace. Okay. And in that space of peace, again, out of nowhere, that little star, Zanspreit. Picked up the phone, called my father. I said, "Hey, what do you know about Zanspreit?" He said, uh, "I'll call a uh, 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 Pastor Paul." Uh, apparently it's a squatter camp close by to this new church where my father was that he was trying to get me to join, mm. um, which I did actually join. Um, I called Pastor Paul. I said, hey, what do you know about Zanspread? He gave me a number of another guy. He said, hey, call Elias. I called Elias. I said, hey, Elias, you don't know me. I don't know you, um, but I've just felt inside a call to Zanspread. Do you know anything? Uh, you know, do you got, have you got a step for me? And Elias says, well, brother, I'm in Port Elizabeth at the moment and uh, we're at a conference and uh, we, a group of us have just been praying that more workers would come into Zanspreit. So this is great. Um, why, don't, why don't we meet up? Okay, wow. And so uh, I met up with Elias. He took me into Zanspreit and it was real Africa all over again, a squatter camp. Hmm. Um, 
just absolute abject poverty and everyone just it's weird when you follow your heart how everyone just welcomes you where you mm. are where, where you are supposed to be yeah if, yeah, if, if yeah. you're walking where you're supposed to be everyone just welcomes you and i get in there and uh I resolved this time that I wasn't going to go in with my own ideas, that I, I kind of left that all behind. I didn't really have a choice because I lost all the money. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a big mess. Yeah. Ended up engaging with guys on the streets, uh, getting into homes, getting into shacks, eating with the people, just getting to hear what the, what the problems were, what the community needed. Mm. And as I got to engage with the people more, I found out that I didn't need to come up with ideas. The people would tell me what What's needed to on? be done. Yeah. Um, and, and I met up with these two guys, Shimmy and Bafana, 21-year-olds, grade 12 failures, just wasting their lives away in, in, in booze and women on the streets. I know some of you guys are thinking that's not wasting. <laughs> <It's> pretty good. <laughs> but they were, they were, they were, they were kind of overdoing it like every day, going yeah. in no other, excuse me, no other direction. One day, Shimmy comes to me um, and, and he says, hey, Brother Philin, uh, you know, the children on the street, streets they they need something to do and we want to play soccer with them we want to help get them off the streets you know can you help us and i'll never forget the question you asked me he says this this is god you follow this this voice this spirit you follow will will you know will, will that help us or should i go and look for uh, look for normal employment work and i was struck at that time i said well dude i have to believe uh, that this has got to work otherwise I wouldn't be walking this journey and mm. I can't make you any promises because I've got nothing to offer all I've got is me so I'm going to say I'll walk with you um, to show that I believe in this yeah. so we started with a soccer ball and 14 kids on a dust patch um, and today we have 120 kids wow. aged 9 to 19 that's part of this uh, uh, soccer soccer club of getting children off the streets and wow um, and, and I believe you've had your first um, child that's actually now got through grade 12. Yeah, yeah. So Godfrey's in grade 12 this year. And thanks to 702 and the birthday wish list, they, nice. uh, wow. yeah, they, and Liberty Life came on board. Literally, I sent in this, my mother sends me an email saying, hey, you should uh, email 702. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I just quickly send this thing off, not believing in this at all. Yeah. Literally, very next day, I get a phone mm. call. Liberty wants to get on and, and help. And so Godfrey's got sponsorship for private tuition of 31 hours leading up to his exams. Awesome. And Liberty says, hey, if you get through that, we, you know, we'll look at taking you a step further and getting you into tertiary education. That's awesome. And just wow. like that, the doors That's open. Fantastic. There's 119 little children behind him that are looking and saying, hey, we can actually get out of this mess. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just got to go. That's fantastic. Now, your teams have also played with Kaiser Chiefs is it, and they do all sorts of stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah, dude, we played uh, Kaiser Chiefs. We went down, I think, four three to Vitz, uh, uh, four three or four two or three two. But I mean, I we bet. I think we put yeah, we put some yeah. some goals against Vitz. Nice. Um, who else? Have we, yeah, yeah, Vitz Pirates, and and all of this again. So I started I started this uh, nonprofit organization eventually, um, and my whole thing was to just empower the people mm. to to do things. Mm. In the time that I was in control of everything, nothing great really happened. And the moment I handed over control and I, I allowed the, the young guys, all Shimi, Bafana, Charlie, and David, uh, to, to form this committee, and I said, okay, you, you guys go. I'm going to give you 100 Rand a month airtime. Uh, go and see what you can do. The next moment, I'm getting phone calls saying, hey, Brother Philin, have you got transport money for us? We've got a match against Vitz. Hey, Brother Philin, have you got transport money? We've got a match against Pirates. And I'm like, so, so, wow, so it's empowering, empowering, yeah. empowering it the actual people who want to are a part of there. Yes. Helping them follow their hearts, find their purpose, their, their direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's doing so much. I don't know, now you are actually writing a book about because we, we've only touched on, on the amazing little, yeah, little yeah. stories. There's so many. That you're writing a book now of your, your real Africa um, experience right up into, and all those profits are going to go to... My Life, My Africa Children's Foundation. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's fantastic. So our book for the show tonight is actually your book. <laughs> you know, it's, it's your book. It's, it's being <laughs> written right now. Chapter 6 is, is, was written yeah. is yeah. done. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a link we're going to put up in the show notes. It goes to evely.com um, where you can actually get involved in the book. So mm. Philene is really looking for people who want to, mm. to support in any way, whether it's we, you're trying to crowdfund the, the book. So it's actually asking people to contribute, whether it's, you know, $10 or $100 or whatever it is whatever that, you that you want to or whether you can contribute with the graphics or the printing or the yeah. whatever aspect of it. So um, just 
anyone yeah, who's an interested, story, it, you know, the this story needs to get out there. And there's does. so much wisdom we, we've, we're highlighting on one aspect. As we said, we couldn't work out which aspect, but this is mm. one that definitely struck yeah. us. Mm. Definitely, yeah. From, from your story. I'm so looking forward to this book. I, I can't mean, wait for yeah. you. When we sat at Percy's last week, I mean, we sat there for two and a half hours listening to your story. Mm. We only listened to about 40 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even cover all of it then. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, definitely we, I, would en- I would encourage everybody to support Sport Let this help yeah. make this book because I think your your goal is by November this year to have the book out I'd there. I'd like so it out. I'd like it out for Christmas shopping. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. excellent. Yeah. Well, so awesome because I think that it, it, the thing is that we keep saying that struck us was how you you had the vision, and even now what you're doing with with all, all these children, um, that vision and following it from your heart is it's just it's, amazing. It's, it's coming things. to life without me. Making it happen. Having, having to mm. do much. Yeah. You just kind show up. Just I love that word. Show <laughs> up show yeah. from your heart and, and, and things happen. And the rest just unfolds, yeah. 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 I want to lead then into to Dina's story because I think you've also got an got a m- amazing vision with, with livelifelecker.com that it's, um, you want to, um, I think, how, how do you say it, um, positive consciousness. So you believe through, through this site we're going to actually be able to achieve positive consciousness in on you know global scale. Yes. So how did you come up with the idea? How did, what is your story with well, finding your vision? Actually what's amazing to me about this whole story is how you set out an intention mm-hmm. and how somewa- somehow it it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, my story starts in 2004. Um, I just did my master practitioner course and, you know, started doing coaching. Mm-hmm. And um, I created a 10-year plan. Okay. And I said that I want to do something special for coaching. I had no idea what that would be, and it seemed everything was done already anyway. So, mm-hmm. But I, that was one of my big dreams, to do something special for coaching. And, um, yeah, you know, life took over and, you know, you go along and you build a practice and then we moved here and um, still nothing came about. I was in IT before I started coaching. And um, then, you know, I thought um, I wrote a book called uh, The Life Coaching Diary 2009. Mm. Okay. And uh, what what he did, what I did was at the end of every week, I had a one page in there with some questions moving, you know, through a few life areas during the year. And it it was actually quite a hit. It nearly bankrupt me, but it was quite (laughs) a hit. (laughs) And uh, then people asked, you know, where's the next one? Where's the next one? And I said, it's just impossible. I I cannot print this again. I mean, Mm. but I wanted to do it online. and I I had no idea how. Okay. And uh, I kept thinking, but there must be a way. There must be a way. And... um, I thought, you know, if I do this in an uh, e-book kind of thing, uh, what's the point? Because it would be in PDF and you cannot edit it. So, I mean, you have to print it out. So what's the point? Mm. And then um, a friend of mine, actually my, a friend of my daughter's, I asked him, I said, Chris, isn't there a new technolo- technology, some way I can do this? He says, and then he said, Dina, it's just blogs. And because my previous life, I come from IT, mm. Everything at that moment just fell into place. And yeah. I just saw the whole system and I think exactly how this must work. Okay. Um, but just taking a step back, um, at the end of the year when I was marketing my book, uh, the, 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 the diary, at the, one of these body, mind and soul events, I was sitting there and I was looking at all these people, um, queuing up to look at, you know, psychics and tarot readers and... and so on wonderful people there i mean no offense but there was this one woman that i saw and she went from the one till the next till the next she must have spent about a thousand rand oh. that morning cool. and i wanted to my, what are you hoping to hear yeah. you know yeah it's like waiting for people outside to tell you yeah, exactly. Mm, exactly what you must do now yeah. and then i just as you said earlier Philippe, that voice you know that just yeah. that it's like a an angel like a thing like a ding yeah. We said, I must help people. I must work towards positive consciousness. People must become positive. 
I thought, well, that's a great idea. But again, I had no idea how, mm. how to do this kind of thing. And in the end, I, um, I thought of a name. Actually, we went to ho on holiday that December, and, and, and I saw this, this T-shirt that said, Life is Good. Thought, wow, oh, I know those T-shirts. They're with the lovely. little man on yes, them. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're lovely. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that's great, you know. So, so yeah, so that can, you know, you know, get my business brain, you know, merchandise, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what do we call it, you know, what we call it? And I was singing in the shower one day, one morning, and I thought to myself, I was cross, and I said, what can I call this thing? I mean, um, why can't I think of anything original? And then it popped into my mind again, you know, live yeah. life lacquer. So I created a website and I designed some T-shirts, but then again, it, it stopped. And then this whole story with the diary and the blogs and the uh, you know the system came about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was it to um, to create positive consciousness by creating positive people. Mm -hmm. So really mm -hmm. giving them the tools. You know, we have mm -hmm. we have wonderful organisations here in South Africa all working towards positivity and give people, you know, like Lead SA and SA Promo and Brand South Africa. It's wonderful mm. uh, how they move. Everybody's, everybody's working together to get us yeah. as positive, the people positive. And um, so we, we, we sort of carry on is to give people the tools mm. to actually get there for themselves. And and some of the tools are, are just uh, wonderful. I mean, there's a whole lot of, of stuff like um, my own blog. I can have my own blog on there. I can have my own journal, which no one sees. It's just for me to put my mm -hmm. my thoughts. And um, there's stories I can contribute to, like positive stories I've heard of and read a lot of others, positive news. There's actual blog written by coaches. So there, there's expert knowledge mm -hmm. and information, videos, events that are happening and, and projects. I think you should get his. I project. think so. I think we can really get that your project. <laughs> <laughs> one of the project, Philip. I'm serious. We'll get your get project on there. Wow. Yeah. wow. And then right now, I know because the, the site's just launched like a couple of weeks ago. It's just very weeks exciting. Ago, Congratulations. I know you've been working so hard on, on the background of this. It's it's just, I know what's what's going in here. So the right now, you, there's things that are, that are still free in and, but there'll be modules that, that you can buy like as you go, as you want them and things like the life wheel. You can do yeah. an exercise. Actually, how it would work is um, my whole idea behind this is is to create a community aspect as well. So if you, if we if I thought if I wanted to create a positive world, then it must be community based as well. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not just South Africa. My vision is really globally. Many of the stories and that kind of thing are all country based. So my whole idea is in the, in the news as well is country based. Is to really start having talks about this positive world. I mean, what will it look like? You know, if we all fight things, like fighting crime and fighting poverty and fighting this, then we just add to the negative energy. Yeah. But what, what do we want instead? And mm. what would that look like? And if we can start focusing on that and, and talk about that, that and put yes. our energy into that in communities and societies mm. and everywhere, mm. you know, mm. then slowly but surely this little seed can grow and then a big vision of mine is to have a barometer, a global barometer. Because how, how would we measure if we have the criteria to say what would this world look like in all different levels, then we can start measuring it by the news that's in the papers, in the media, wow. and from people. And we can actually gauge how positive are we becoming per country and then maybe globally. I know it will probably take a long time. Hopefully the <laughs> website is still on there by that time. <laughs> but yeah, so, so you, will have a, you have a public space and, and the idea is really for the community to connect. Yeah, okay. To wow. people to get talking, to get a conversation going. Yeah. Mm. And then you have your private space. That's your journal. And the whole public space, of course, is free. And your journal is also free. And then... The coaching, the self-coaching, the tools that giving you, getting you personally developed, uh, that's subscription-based. Mm. 
So you pay a once uh, a subscription. You can either do it per month or you can take out a three, six, or 12-month subscription. And uh, you have then access to the full site. Mm. So it's not module-based anymore. And it's to the full and site. And some of the things in the background are working out your life values, your life purpose, yes. the, the goals, and having a way to track the goals. And then I, I believe it's, it sends you emails to remind you, you said you're going to do this by this date. How are you doing with that? So it helps, and you, uh, it helps yeah. with really commitment. helps you yeah. 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 Basically yeah. and keep you on track. And you can go in and edit and change yes. things anytime. Time. So, so, so basically, it's I wanted to create the same sort of scenario as when somebody sits in front of me. Mm. You know, when the client mm. comes and see see me as a coach, you start with where they're at at the moment, uh, and you know, you check what their values are because your values drive your behavior. Mm -hmm. You check what uh, people come for career or whatever. What is their life purpose? And that can be any intersection. It's not to say I have to do a certain thing or a certain thing only falls. Uh, qualifies as, as, as a life purpose. Yeah, and then your goals, you know. Uh, so many people start out in life and then they, they don't take the time. Of course, it takes effort. It takes time to get somewhere to be to achieve success. Yeah. It takes effort. Mm. And uh, the story that always um, st st stuck me is, or struck me is, yes. is Anthony Robbins in his book, um, awaken the, di the giant yeah, within. Right. Yeah. And he wrote about this um, research team who went to the Yale University in 1973. Yes. Most people know that story. Yes. And they did a survey and checked how many of the graduates actually wrote down a plan for their lives. Only 3% did that. So 20 years later, they went back to look up all the surviving members and they found that the 3% accumulated more wealth <laughs> And the 97% put together. So that is the mm. power of goals, you see, because we, we create our lives. Mm. Course, and, and writing them, but getting them out there and getting being, being aware of them. There. Really being aware of live with them. Mm. And that's, I think, part is, is, is I think, the, the message for us, or from us to tonight, is that when you do follow your heart, and yeah. you follow yes. what, what you, you keep getting that, that message, that this is what I I'm I'm need to be doing, yeah. And you put it out there in the world, whether it's by writing the goals or, or creating the website or the yeah. book or talking to the people and smiling, you know, however, yes, you take action. whatever your ac you action. Take action. Our you word. Take action. Yes, that's a big word. You do that. You follow your heart, though. The, the action that you do comes from, from whatever for you that, that is. Yes. The most amazing possibilities just happen and open up and yeah. you check them and... This magic and action. So, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. As mm. good to say, eh? Magic yeah. and so action. So yes. on that note, I want to thank you both for, for joining us and sharing your stories and your vision and how you followed your heart. Hey, thanks for having heart us. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Really very inspiring it. show. I hope others out there that are listening they will, will take that action from the heart. And yeah. um, we're back again on the 8th of August, so two weeks from tonight. And I think tomorrow is the Let's Talk Sports show. Sports, yeah. Right? Yes. And yes, yeah, so... Yeah, thank you for joining us, guys. Everybody who joined in. Thank you to our guests. Um, and keep talking about what's possible. Ah, oh, I guess. Well, all yes. the, we'll be on the, in the show notes. Um, <laughs> it's done, by the way. <laughs> Dina is obviously on the website is livelifelacquer.com or Twitter is livelifelacquer. And on Facebook as well. For anyone overseas, lacquer is L-E-K-K-E-R oh, and yes. it means... It means, it means anything, so many things. anything positive. <laughs> anything. Yeah, it does. It's a yeah. very South Africanism. And it's yes. actually in the Oxford Dictionary now. Oh, as in cool. It's an international word, yes. Right. Go to the Oxford Great. Dictionary. And then <laughs> Philene is on Twitter at um, P-H-I-L-E-N-N -N N. for Philene I do. Otherwise, my life, what's it? Uh, so oh. Remind me, the, just one of the websites? Or just mylifemyafrica.org. Yes, and yeah, and, yeah. Every, and you'll be able to find there. everything from there. And go to evely.com and, and look up. My Life, My Africa, you'll find the book. Yeah, we're mm. definitely going to be keeping track of you guys, obviously. Yeah, we will. You can also <laughs> follow um, him on, on Live Life Lacquer. We will definitely register Philin's uh, project as wow. a, pro a social responsibility project yeah, on Live awesome. Life Lacquer. Wow, yes. thank Thanks, you. and you obviously can yes, follow sir. us on LT Possibility. Right. LTP. <laughs> 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 LT Possibility, our Twitter handle, at, or on Facebook. And yeah, follow your heart, people. Yeah, thank and you we'll guys. see you in the flip side. Yeah. See you next time. Ciao. Thank you.